Yeah, well, I, I think Nick brings experience. Uh, if you look at the last couple of playoff uh, years, his team has played into the semifinals, and his ice time last year, I think, was a uh, he was one in the top three, and I think the ice time between him and the other two were 12 second differential. So, and the year before, he was again in the top three in a team that went to the semis. So he, he's a guy that can log big minutes at important uh, times of the year for for teams that play deep. And uh, he's a skater, he's a puck mover. I think it's a uh, a dimension that that will add to our group. Um, with Scandella and, and Mikkel and Bortz, they were very similar players. And Wallman's also a skater, but doesn't ha nearly have the experience of a player like Nick. So I think it uh, it gives us an option to to potentially play Nick with Colton or, or Falker and uh, have the coaches work, work all six and seven of these guys into the lineup. Doug, we, 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 we lost you at the end. Can you, you said he, he gives us an option and then Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, he get, he gives. I think he gives the coaches an option. Now we have, we have seven experienced players. Mikkel has played uh, uh, deep into the World Championships and won, and so he's an experienced player uh, internationally, getting more experience every day. And obviously, Scandella and Bortz have played uh, a lot of NHL games, and the four above them, uh, w with Letty in that group, now have played a lot. So it gives us uh, uh, different looks that that uh, the coach can use, whether he depending on who he wants to pair Nick with and, and maybe situations during the game. Doug, is he somebody you've already, uh, always been looking at here or did he kind of just jump in here late and gave you a chance to jump out? Well, I think as the season progressed and uh, uh, we started to look for defensemen, uh, he, he was he was on that list of players that we've scouted uh, intensely over the last uh, couple of months. He's not a unknown player though to the, to the Western Conference and us. Uh, where he's played prior to the Islanders and then watching him play last year. So, uh, you know, this has been a difficult uh, season as far as the cap. I think if you look at, uh, at the NHL salary cap, uh, well over half the teams are at the cap or have played the whole season in LTI. Uh, our situation this year was dollar in, dollar out. So when you, when you bring a player like Nick in, we had to uh, move out $5.5 million in cap space. Uh, Detroit was able to assume half of that, and then the Sunquist portion uh, equaled 5-5, five, five, and we were able to make a deal where dollar in, dollar out. Hey, Doug, do you think a move like this, do you think a move like this can help the intensity of the Blues? Uh, I, I don't think any one player is going to help the intensity of the Blues. That has to come from our leadership group. That has to start with uh, the guys that wear letters. Uh, but also, it's, it's everybody... It's everyone's responsibility on the team to prepare to play the right way to win hockey games. And uh, the NHL season's not 82 Rembrandts. Uh, and right now we're going through a, a play right now that's not indicative of winning hockey. And we have to get out of that. So I don't think any one player is going to come in and change that. That has to come from within. And uh, uh, that's going to be the, that's going to be up to the players to, to get that done. Doug, how would you describe your interest level in some of the top guys that were available and also your decision not to give up what looks like uh, you know, extremely high prices to get those guys? Uh, well, I, I think you, you want to be involved in everything. There, there's was a, uh, it, it's, hard, uh, it's hard, JR, to, you know, <laughs> you, you, you wish you could play at, at free agency and then, and then you wish you could play at the draft trading capital and you wish you could play now trading capital, but at some point, you, you just can't do everything all the time. And, uh, you know, we, we've been a competitive team for the better part of a decade now. Uh, we were able to keep our first round pick and get a good prospect in Neighbors, a uh, player that we think should be pushing very hard for our team next year. Bull Duke seems to be a very good young player and we wanted to add to that. Uh, again, you, 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 can't, you can't always play in that, that market of giving up giving up future first round picks uh, all the time and this was a year we didn't feel that it was important to do that now that being said we've done it in the past for a player like Bo Meester who had this playoff run in another one and then we we're able to sign them uh, so giving up a first round pick for a rental uh, this year didn't seem to make uh, and and quite honestly the quality of player uh, in, in our opinion you know, we, we didn't view we didn't view first round assets as something we wanted to give away uh, at, at this at this time. Doug, are, are, are you talking about uh, a, a long term with Nick Letty, or do you, is this a wait and see? Oh, this is a wait and see. Uh, 
I, again, JR, or I'm sorry, uh, JT, you, you look at uh, the salary cap when it's going to be uh, flat to increase by a million dollars. Uh, right now, we have eight of our nine uh, forwards coming back with David Prime being the only UFA. As I said, we have neighbors coming in here. Uh, so it's a flat cap when you, when you don't have many expiring contracts means things are going to be tight. So uh, we're, we're focused on now till the end of the season. Uh, and then we're going to reassess uh, our whole group on how we played, uh, what the final result was, and, and how we can make sure we're a very competitive team next year. Doug, uh, I know plus minus isn't the end all be all, but uh, it just wasn't very good here. Any, any any thoughts on that in terms of how he? Uh, Letty, you're talking about? Yeah, he, yeah. He, his plus minus wasn't very good this year. Just any thoughts about that? And, and realizing that's that's not the end all. Yeah, I, I think when you're on a on a developing team and uh, playing against the other team's top players all night long. Uh, and a team that's that's you know not winning, they're probably losing more than they're winning. Your plus minus is going to take a hit. I think if you want to see reflective on how good the player is, is you go back to the team that he was on in the Islanders when, you know, I said they played in the semifinals two years in a row, and he played 22 minutes a night in the playoffs. And and on a team that was thought as a very good defending team, you know, he was at the tops of the ice time within 12 seconds of of uh, the two guys that were with him. So. Uh, I think any any stats travel with the, with the competitive part of your team. Uh, uh, what, what can you say about Sunquist and the the, the, the service and the, the, the play that he gave you for, for uh, four and a half? Years? Yeah, Sonny's been uh, one of my favorite players. Quite honestly, he's uh, you know he got the nickname Sonny because of Sunquist, but he actually it is Sonny. He's he's always got a smile on. I've always enjoyed being around him. Uh, the last couple of years, we spent a lot of time together at the practice rink as he's been uh, coming back and working hard from his injuries. Uh, a really good player, uh, always going to have a great memory here uh, as a blue. Uh, what we've seen with David Perron and other players in the past, that uh, hockey's a small world. You never know when you reconnect with somebody. But it was, it was uh, part and parcel was you have to create space to make these deals. And also the the role that uh, that he was playing on our team right now with a flat cap, uh, you know, if you're not in, if you know, he wasn't in our group of nine this year, and a 2.75 million dollar cap hit, you know, you we have to make sure we're spreading that out uh, in 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 ways that we can uh, put a top team on the ice. And uh, but all in all, like, obviously, Oster Sundquist is going to be remembered fondly here. Uh, on and off the ice. I wish him nothing but uh, the best on the ice uh, health-wise. I wish him speedy recoveries from uh, the surgeries that he's had and uh, uh, I think he's going to be a good player for a long time and uh, this organization was better uh, having him a part of it than it was before he got here. Doug, what can you tell us about which, which... Yeah, an experienced uh, player, uh, very, very physical, hard-nosed player. Uh, has been a, a call-up player throughout his career. He's played, I think, 131 NHL games. Uh, when we made this trade, obviously, you, you want to carry seven defensemen. Uh, it was not moving a defenseman in this trade uh, made Jake Wallman become the eighth. Uh, and so what we did is we moved him, gave him a fresh opportunity in Detroit. He's an unrestricted free agent with the years over. We brought in a player that can, uh, we know can provide us service when needed. Uh, and, a, and a great uh, organizational player, and having him uh, with our group for next year also is a plus. Doug, oh, you started, uh, oh, go ahead, Jeremy. Doug, I was going to say, you know, I know you're not going to get into details, but uh, you know, there are some other names that were being talked about, and, and you see trades made for them, and people wonder maybe the Blues could have made that deal. Are there things that you deal with that no one else would see, like uh, you know, maybe a team wants your second rounder this year that you didn't have, or maybe the player? you know, didn't want to sign an eight-year deal in St. Louis. Are there things behind the scenes that maybe prohibit those types of moves from being made that we don't see? Yeah, usually, JR, my experience is that teams aren't, they're not hung up on what year they get their pick, whether it's a second or a third, if it's this year or next year. Uh, you know, it might be the fit, it might be a kicker added on, uh, but there, there are a lot of things that go on on every deal. Uh, a lot of it is cap-related, a lot of it is, is, is futures, so, 
there's a lot of moving parts on every deal. Uh, so I, I, I guess to say, yeah, you probably don't know everything that we're working on behind closed doors. And uh, that, that's the difficult part. I was saying earlier to someone that, you know, when I started in this industry, there was no, really the internet was just coming on board, but there was no Twitter, there was no instant uh, information. And uh, I always got, I took it personal when players' names were being bantied around. I didn't think it was fair to them or their families. But now I just understand that's just part and parcel of today's world. Uh, you know, rumors fly. Uh, most of the guys that, uh, not on this call, but, but around uh, maybe, maybe nationally, they, they bat about 250 in, in the rumors that they start and they seem to be fine with that. I, I'm not really sure what that, what that does. Uh, probably gets you more clicks to, than, than most people or that, that, that you want, but I've never been a big fan of of reporting things that aren't factual, but that, that just seems to happen these days. Hey, Doug, you speaking, of Twitter, uh, speaking of Twitter, uh, Doug, what, what can you say, if anything, about the, the fact that Bennington's name was out? Well, I think I just answered that question. Hey, Doug, you spoke a lot in the past uh, about looking for an identity for that fourth line. Was that an area that you were exploring at the trade deadline, or do you feel like those options are still internal? Well, I think they, they are internal. I think uh, we, we've seen a little bit of uptick with Torpachenko uh, and McEachern right now. Uh, uh, again, when you're dollar in, dollar out, you you know you, you pick the player and you tell me his salary, and then you you can do the math on who would have had to leave to get that done. So it's not just it, it, this isn't uh, this isn't uh, uh, inf uh, infinite number of dollars it can spend. So you you have to. Yeah, would you like to improve in different areas? You sure would, but when, you, when you're at the cap, you have to deal with, with the reality of the space you have. Doug, I just want to make sure, too, that I'm clear on this, too. If, if you wait on a guy like Letty and kind of a wait-and-see approach, uh, does this uh, give you some flexibility and, and options for the offseason to do some things maybe that weren't there before that you'll have a chance to do now? Well, we'll see. Hey, our focus is on the rest of this year, but... Uh, we've cleared up some cap space for next year. Uh, we, we have some young players that we think are coming and uh, uh, by not, you know, going in with multiple first round picks or first and seconds and a lot of future assets, we, we do have some ammunition to play if we, if we decide to at the draft or in free agency. Doug, will Wachowski uh, start for you guys in uh, spring? Yes, he will, yeah. Hey Doug, I know you don't get caught up in the white noise ever, but uh, you know when when you don't go all in or make a significant move, people will say that you know maybe that speaks to the confidence level that he has in this group. You know, I just want to give you a chance to respond. You made one move today, you know, fairly significant, but you know, what's your response to your confidence level in this group after today? Uh, well, I, I think you know we're. I think Jr. It's it's interesting because, and and this is a real positive, quite honestly. I, I take it as a as a badge of honor, like we're, we're sitting right now second in the in this division, third in the conference, and you know the question that you gave me acts like we're an awful team. Uh, we're, we're third in the we're third in the conference, and, and we have a good team. Uh, we're not playing particularly well right now, uh, and we have to get through that. But I believe that the guys are going to get through that, uh, and and then it goes back earlier to the, uh, you know you. You know, and, and I, I do read everyone, whatever, all you guys write. I find it fascinating. Uh, you know, we should be all in now, and then you're going to write an article next week that they got no prospects. <laughs> so, I mean, you, you, can't, you can't be all in on everything all the time. Do you personally and, and your staff relish the challenge of, of the bar? Obviously, as competitors, relish the challenge of the bar being set as, as high as, as it is, especially this time of year? Uh, I, I, I do, and I know, I know our staff does. Uh, you you want to play... You want to be you want to be a gold standard in the NHL. Uh, you strive to to be the best. And, and the one thing that I take the most uh, not the most I, I take pride in is that when when you look back to 2010-11, uh, it was Chicago and St. Louis in, in the Central Division, and then uh, it was St. Louis and Winnipeg popped in there for a bit. Then Nashville popped in there for a bit. Now Colorado's in there, but the one constant usually in the top four has been St. Louis. And uh, that's a testament to the great work our players do year in, year out, and, and our scouting staff. Uh, so we, we, we love the challenge. We love being pushed by our fan base. Uh, 
because it, it, it makes us be better every day. Uh, but we, with that reality, you, you do have to have an eye on your draft picks and your future and your cap and all those other things. Uh, if, you know, I, di I did work in an organization uh, 100 years ago pre-cap and, and a lot of these questions never be asked because you, you would just outspend your competition. Now you have to outthink your competition. Army, you had a, a stretch there where uh, with Sonny and with Schwartzy, when those guys were playing, you guys won, and if those guys were injured and out, you didn't. Who, who would you expect now can be those drivers, those engine guys for this team? Well, tongue in cheek, but uh, I, I think I read a stat, and you guys, I, I shouldn't say it because I haven't verified it myself, but I, I think we're like 15, 4, and 3 when Brownie's in the lineup. So, so maybe that's the guy we got to get going every night. Uh, but no, there, there are certain players that you, you, you rely on. We rely on O'Reilly. We rely on Shen, Perenko. Uh, you know, we're, we have a very good tandem of goalies. Uh, you know, we need the engine. The engine of the St. Louis, always, St. Louis Blues has always been the sum of all its parts over just one part. And uh, so we're, we're, not a, we're not a singular driven team. Uh, where, where if one player goes out, we don't think we should be competitive. Doug, um, with what was happening with Vladi in the beginning of the season with the request for trade, uh, was there any interest anybody asking regarding Vladi in this trade period? No, I, that, that Vladi thing went away very quickly. Uh, quite honestly, in training camp, he came into play. He's, he's having a great year. Uh, as I said, we're... We're, we're, I, I get it. We're not Colorado. We're not the best team in hockey, but we're we're, we're competitive in our division. We're comp very competitive in our conference, and uh, that hasn't been an issue, and and it was an issue for anyone, quite honestly, all year. Doug, is Letty going to join the team in Washington and be available for tomorrow? Yes, he is. Yes. Hey, Doug, uh, piggybacking on you saying that uh, we'll rate next week that you don't have any prospects. <laughs> <laughs> How? Uh, how important is it because the guys you're drafting now in the first round and the assets you have coming up now are going to be you know available in three four five years hopefully when a lot of these contracts are getting into the back half just how important is it to hang on to these assets and not make that kind of big move right now because of that yeah it's it, it is important because you know i look at a guy like neighbors who's obviously a highly sought after commodity uh I have him penciled in, if not on our team, right out of the training camp, very close. And I think one of the things that, that and, and I give full credit to our amateur staff, that's well beyond my uh, scope of expertise, but you know, we, we don't have to go, JR, to a total you know, 60 point rebuild because they found Cairo and Thomas at areas of the draft that you usually don't find players you build around. And so because we have those two players and we can grow with them, I think we're able to, to, to get these younger players up and running. And at some point, like we did with Shattenkirk and Stastny, we may have to move veteran players around for, for, for picks to try and exploit that. But uh, our, our older players aren't quite old yet. Uh, you know, they're, they're, not, they're certainly not young, but you know, 29, 30, 31 is still a very competitive age in the NHL, uh, especially with expansion. Expansion always, tax on it 12 to 16 months uh, to a good player's career because not not because they get better because the uh, the talent gets spread out more and then the talent even gets spread out more with a flat cap or, or a, a cap that doesn't escalate by very much so I think that this team has the the opportunity to be competitive for a number of years um, but it's it's the the turnover not the turnover the appreciation of Cairo and Thomas and now you know they're get they're getting their eyes open that that they have to be good every night. It's not they they can no longer they don't they no longer have the luxury of of being good. You know three out of five games they got to be good five out of five games because that's that's what we think of them and that and that's the status they have on our team. Doug, if you talk to other managers, how often did neighbor's name come up? Sometimes that's a pretty good way to judge your your young player. Yeah, well, I actually do that after I, I'll go back in and we rate all of our prospects and then I re-rate them after after now and after the draft because when, when people call about your guys, you know if you have good good players and there, there's been a few players uh, this year that, that I got calls on that, uh, that, that excited me. So uh, 
I don't want to get into specific names, but but we have we have you know some prospects that uh, a lot of people might not know a lot about that that do have value around the league. Hey Doug, this isn't uh, trade deadline related, but I, you, I think you only have ten healthy forwards right now. You have someone coming up from Springfield for tomorrow. Yeah, we do. I'm going to wait. Uh, Craig's in the air now, uh, but we will be bringing somebody up under emergency.